Hi, this is Fantastic Captain. Today I'm going to tell you about science fiction miniseries from 2009 called Impact. <laughs> Professor Alex Kintner shows his children the moon. Soon a meteor shower is expected to begin. People all over the world are coming out onto the streets to see this phenomenon. And then the first glowing body flies across the sky. People huddle around their telescopes, journalists report on what is happening. Scientists at the New Mexico Space Observatory are closely monitoring the stream. Five giant meteors can be clearly seen. If just one of them were to hit the Earth, it would cause something that happened 50 million years ago. In Berlin, a couple in love is watching the stream. Roland Emerson is a scientist and what is happening is very important to him. But Martina is more interested in discussing their wedding. Suddenly, Dr. Maddie Road notices a huge meteor in the stream, twice the size of the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. And it becomes clear that it is headed straight for the moon. There it crashes into the moon and the satellite's debris scatters at an unimaginable speed. This means that they will reach the Earth in less than an hour. The country's leadership is concerned. Maddie explains that the telescope could not see the meteor due to the dense stream of small stones. If its fragments fall on a large city, it will be a disaster. Authorities ask people not to leave their homes, and immediately the first fragments begin to fall to the earth. There are destruction and deaths. Fires start. A large piece breaks away from the moon, and it flies towards the earth. Scientists try to calculate the place of impact. The President of America is briefed on what is happening. The meteorite falls off the coast of Australia, causing a giant wave. Maddie reports to the President that due to the collision, the trajectory of the moon has approached the planet. This is very unusual, but gravity has settled, and the orbit has stabilized. Professor Alex Kintner, who once worked with gravity, is confident that there is no chance of a meteorite destroying the Earth. At that moment, he sees Maddie Rhodes on the screen and admits that he knew her. A team of tourists finds a giant crater in the forest. A wave of floods sweeps across the world, leaving scientists baffled. Jared shows Maggie a map of tides, and their timing has also changed. But what is the reason? Experts can only say one thing. The meteorite affected the moon, and it affected the Earth. Maddie calls Alex and invites him to the observatory, but he can't leave his children as his wife has recently passed away. Suddenly, cellular communication disappears, and electric discharges begin to strike around the perimeter of a baseball field. Gas stations in cities begin to explode and witnesses report electric discharges, but scientists cannot explain what is happening. Roland is taken to the crater the children found, in the middle of which a spherical fragment is visible. But it is literally embedded in molten rock, and geological hammer is instantly attracted to it. But meteorites do not have magnetic properties. Maddie and Alex try to find answers to the questions. Why is the moon behaving strangely? Why has the Earth's electromagnetic field increased? Roland tells the scientists that the meteorite they found resembles a brown dwarf, the remains of a dead star. Apparently, after the collision of two stars, the debris was scattered throughout the universe, and one hit the Earth. And the second fragment of the dwarf most likely fell on the moon, turning it into a giant magnet over the heads of the Earthlings. Now the Earth and the moon can begin to approach each other. Maggie tells the president about changes in the moon's orbit. Normally, the satellite moved along a circular axis, but now its trajectory is elliptical. It will be approaching and receding, and all because of the brown dwarf. The president assigns Maddie to assemble a team of specialists, and the woman calls Alex. They meet at a new laboratory that has connections with all major space centers in the world and introduces the team of top scientists. The mass of the moon is changing significantly. Now its orbital speed is increasing, the orbit is changing, and the moon is approaching the Earth. In approximately 48 hours, everything related to electricity will be disabled. Later, Alex and Maddie have dinner at the restaurant and talk about the peculiarities of science. Suddenly the lamp explodes and the scientists rush to the laboratory. Another electromagnetic wave has swept across the world, but it turned out to be much stronger and more dangerous. Something completely extraordinary is happening on the streets. People and objects suddenly flew up as if they lost their mass. The center receives photos from all over the world. Objects, people, machinery and even airplanes were lifting themselves. Alex believes that they have witnessed deviations in gravity that were previously considered impossible. The mass of the moon is one-sixth of the mass of Earth, but it has changed receiving the brown dwarf. The main law of gravity, objects with small mass are attracted to objects with large mass. Only, what is now larger? Lightning strikes last from 5 minutes to 5 hours. Soon the moon will reach its minimum distance from Earth, and the electromagnetic storm will cease. But people need to wait for an even more powerful wave. 
They need to prepare somehow. Remove planes from the runways. Stop all traffic. People should hide in buildings. Military officials consider scientists incompetent and discuss alternative solutions to the problem. An instructional broadcast is airing on TV for the population. Everyone is instructed to enter their homes, secure loose objects, turn off electricity, and seek shelter in basements if possible. Police cars are broadcasting announcements on the streets. Once again, the electrical systems begin to fail. People and vehicles are lifted into the air and then thrown back down. Satellites malfunction and wired communication is lost. The first footage of the European disaster sites is being shown on TV. The videos of destruction are disheartening and frightening. America is next. All that is left for people is to have faith in God. The European Space Agency makes contact. The moon has further narrowed its orbit, meaning it will have an even stronger impact on Earth. Panic is growing. This is only the beginning. Roland cannot reach Marty, who is unconscious in a crash train. The moon hangs over the Earth closer than ever before, and the world falls silent in anticipation of the disaster. But how can one hide from gravity? Maddie informs the president that the moon will collide with Earth in 39 days. The planet will simply disappear. People in the train begin to regain consciousness, helping each other and escaping from the burning cars. 20% of the country is without power. Only backup generators are working. The situation is even worse in Europe. But the level of electromagnetic waves is becoming stronger. Logan decides to personally take the children to Alex and ignores the government's warning to stay at home. Meanwhile, the next wave begins. A powerful force lifts a massive ship into the air and it disintegrates. Cars hover over the ground and then fall from the sky. Many people suffer fractures, cuts, and injuries. Rescue workers are operating, but their resources are catastrophically insufficient. The president announces the closure of airports and train stations and imposes a curfew. Looting will be punished severely. Maddie proposes a way to change the trajectory of the asteroid. Nuclear explosions. If calculated correctly, the moon will be directed towards the sun, and the brown dwarf will give it acceleration. And there is a rocket type that can do this. Scientists report that 1,100 warheads of the latest system, each with a capacity of 20 megatons, will be needed to carry out the plan. They will create the force that will push the moon away, and solar gravity will do the rest. But where to get such a large number of rockets of the required technology? They will have to share these developments with the whole world. But the military is categorically against it. They have their plan. Just shoot the moon with regular rockets. The debris will fall on Earth, but it will not destroy it. Maddie is convinced this will only bring the Earth's destruction closer. If the moon starts moving, no rockets will stop it. The president takes time to consider. Alex is told that his children are not in the house. World leaders gather for a meeting. A wave of indignation sweeps the world. Panic and distrust for the government prevail. The military plan goes into action. The president addresses the nation and talks about the upcoming Operation Bodyguard to destroy the moon with nuclear warheads. It will happen today. And today they lost their nationalities and gained one name, people of the planet Earth. Lloyd and the children witness the rocket launch and later find a broken cafe where they stop for the night because their grandfather suffers a heart attack. The rockets fly to the moon and explode, but strange data is coming in at the center. The moon is breaking apart and now the collision will occur five days earlier. The military plan has failed. Roland shares an idea. The moon is breaking apart while rotating. Apparently the brown dwarf has shifted and now Alex's plan can be put into action. They need to magnetize the moon's core, turning it into a huge magnet. The dwarf and the moon's core will repel each other. If this is done when the satellite is at its furthest point from Earth, the moon will push away the dwarf and itself will fall into the gravity of the sun. And it will start to rotate on a normal orbit. But a special device needs to be built on the moon. The expedition there was planned for a month from now. It just needs to be accelerated. A thin nanotechnological wire is used for magnetization, which needs to be attached to the winged rocket and the magnetizing device. The scientists have analyzed the moon and think that the rockets destroyed the satellite structure all the way to the core. Astronauts must analyze the resulting canyons and choose the most suitable one, then descend into it and aim the rocket at the target. They will attach the cable and equipment to the rocket using a new development, a prototype spacelifter, and shoot it into the moon's core. A detonation will occur, and the bridge will start working, creating the necessary electromagnetic field of the moon's core. The brown dwarf and the moon's core will begin to move away from each other. Only the astronauts are unlikely to have time to return to the lunar module. Volunteers are needed, and action must be taken immediately.
The European Space Agency is ready to perform the mission, but they need someone on the moon who knows the magnetization device. The president turns to Alex as he's the only one who knows how to operate the equipment. Roland, on the other hand, is the best in lunar geology. The men are shocked. They haven't been trained, and there is only one chance for their return. But there's simply no time to prepare someone else. Alex asks them to find his children and says goodbye to Maddie. The men fly to the European Space Center. They are introduced to the cosmonauts of the lunar module, Sergey and Courtney. Martina sees a news report on TV about the module launch and recognizes Roland. Lloyd and the children find an old receiver and listen to the news. Martina makes her way to the Space Center. Lloyd gives the children a photo of their mother and tells them about her. They will always be with their mom. Their father will surely find them, then he dies. Martina learns that there is practically no chance for Roland to return from the moon. They get married. A passing man picks up the children and takes them to the city. The lunar module takes off. Roland finds a suitable place to assemble the equipment. Maddie is informed about Alex's children being found, and the kids are put in touch with their father, who says goodbye to them. The module lands on the moon, and the scientists start assembling the equipment. The calculated time to reach the required location on the moon is only six hours. The batteries aren't connected, and it's discovered that the battery inlet is at fault, but it will take at least five hours to replace it. The military asks to start scanning the surface of the moon to determine the coordinates of the impact. Roland and Courtney head to the crevice on a light aircraft. At the center, they realize that they are running out of time. The end of the Earth's life comes, but there is no panic anywhere. People are calm and collected. They spend their last hours fulfilling their desires. They do what they didn't have time for. They seek love. They find faith. The battery is finally replaced, but the fissure turns out to be wider than the astronauts thought, and the spacecraft begins to accelerate. If the electromagnetic device is activated too early, it will simply be crushed on the surface. There is just over an hour left before reaching the checkpoint. The device is ready, scientists are waiting for the coordinates, and suddenly the spacecraft loses control. The astronauts disappear from the screens. In the next moment, it becomes clear that they have crashed onto a stone ledge. Roland tries to hold on to Courtney who is hanging over the abyss, but she dies. Roland contacts Alex, the equipment is faulty and he cannot transmit the coordinates and there's only 10 minutes left. By some miracle, Roland manages to activate the device and begins transmitting data. The rocket is launched and flies into the canyon. Sergei suggests flying to rescue them, they still have time. Alex is against it, they have to wait for Roland, but his module is broken. Roland asks his comrades to leave without him, he won't be able to get out. Sergei launches the module. Roland leaves a message on the surface of the moon, the rocket flies past him, there is an explosion. Marty silently cries at the monitors. Everyone at the center goes outside to see if the planet has been saved. The crumbling moon is visible in the sky. And then the surviving module comes on the air. Alex and Sergey miraculously survive and return to Earth. The president thanks the team for their work. Everything worked out. There were many casualties, but the world remained intact. People from all over the world gathered to celebrate a new beginning. Hostility came to an end. It was time for self-healing. Perhaps people were given a second chance. The children and Maddie meet Alex at the airport. And in the sky, parts of the torn satellite are visible. Let's put aside the scientific errors of which there are many in the movie. What is much more important is the idea expressed in the finale. Must there really be a threat to life itself for people to understand that they are all children of one Earth?